what do we owe to socialism in this country? Every single one of you in this room, at some point, has benefited from the principles of the National Health Service. The free market capitalist economy of the United States has 40 million people without access to health care, and the rest have to pay a great deal for it. Where did those ideas come from? Did they come from some benign, very wealthy person, or were they, yes, the dreams of people who saw their mothers dying in poverty, saw their wives dying in childbirth, or saw other, I'm coming to you, um, or saw others suffering grievously because they could not afford medical care. They wanted a communal system that protected everybody from illness and disease. Uh, health inequality uh, has increased since the institution in, uh, of the National Health Service and in particular has widened uh, since the increase, the vast increase in expenditure on it. So, at the very least, it is not a, 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 um, a, an egalitarian institution. Wow. Health inequality has increased since there's been the universal provision of the health service. I seriously doubt what you are saying. What I do know is there is health inequality within our society because of poverty, because of debt, and there is a longer life expectancy for the richer than the poorer. There are many things to be conquered in health issues, but the very principle of a health service as a right and free at the point of use is surely something that we can all be proud of. And that, my friends, owes its origins to those socialist thinkers in the 19th century that saw the evils of free market capitalism in Victorian Britain. Think about that. Surely there's something good in that. And you could go on about many other things, such as access to education, such as the development of council housing in the 1920s by the Labour Party particularly, but by those that believed that there should be decent housing for all. Again, better quality housing leads to better education achievements, leads to better health. There are many things that we owe in our welfare state to the whole ideas of socialism. And so I want to bring to you the moral case about socialism. Those people opposite that spoke will have you believe that somehow or other there's something normal and natural in living in a society, as, where, as Katie says, the dog eats dog, the poorest go to, the, go to hell, and the richest do well. There isn't. There isn't at all. I believe in everybody there is an ounce of socialism. In some people there's a pound. In some place, pe people there are many kilos of socialism. Socialism is surely about the kind of society you want to live in. Do you want to live in a society where there is no public provision of any kind of service, there is only private provision, and the only thing to worship is money and getting wealthy at the expense of others? Or do you want to live in a society where there is universal health care, where there is a protection against uh, total destitution and poverty, and every child gets to go to school? Because in many parts of the world they don't. And uh, I want to live in a society that has that kind of collective principle about it. But I also think that we have to have a thought, which hasn't come up very much tonight, about the natural environment in which we live. We live in a free market society, to some extent in Britain, to a great extent in the USA, and certainly the um, domination of the world's multinational companies and banks is very, very powerful indeed. Are they really caring about what happens to the environment? Are they really caring about the level of exploitation of oil and other mineral resources? Are they, are they really caring about the damage they're doing to the environment? It's only if you live in a society and a set of principles where you, uh, where you take from people what they can afford in order to give that to people that they, that who need it. So in other words, from each according to their means to each according to their needs is surely a very sensible, very basic um, principle in life. If you want to live in a decent world, then is it right 
that there, the world's economy is dominated by a group of unaccountable multinational corporations. They are the real power in the world today, not the nation state. It's the global corporations. <coughs> and if you want to look at the victims of the ultimate of this free market catastrophe that the world is faced with at the moment, go to the shanty towns on the fringes of so many big cities around the world. Look at those people, migrants dying in the Mediterranean trying to get to Lampedusa. Why are, they Why are they there? Why are they dying? Why are they living in such poverty? I'll tell you this, it's when the World Bank arrives and tells them to privatise all public services, to sell off state-owned land, to make inequality a paragon of virtue, that is what drives people um, away now, and into a danger and poverty. And I will conclude with this thought. Think about the world you want to live in. Do you want the dog to eat the dog or do you want us all to care for each other, support each other and eliminate poverty and injustice? A different world is possible. Thank you.